Dinosaur Bones by a Licky. The first dinosaur I ever saw was in a book. There were pictures of all different kinds. The book said what dinosaurs ate and where they lived. It said they all died out 65 million years ago. Then I went to the museum and saw dinosaur bones. The pictures in the book seemed to come alive. I could see how big dinosaurs really were. I was glad the skeletons didn't move. I wondered how people know so much about dinosaurs. How do they know that dinosaurs looked like if they'd never seen one? How do they know how how do they know dinosaurs ever existed? For a long time people didn't know. Then they began to find fossils. Fossils are the remains of animals and plants that died long ago. The animals and plants were preserved in mud or sand and slowly turned to stone. People found fossil shells, leaves, and fish. They found fossils of creatures that no longer exist. The fossils were clues to the distant past, long before human beings appeared on Earth. The more fossils people found, the more curious they became. Could there have been human giants? Mrs. Mantell didn't know it, but she found the first fossil that scientists would identify as part of a dinosaur. In 1822 in England, Mary Ann Mantell spotted some strange giant fossil teeth in a pile of rocks near a quarry. She showed them to her husband, a doctor who collected fossils. Dr. Gideon Mantell had never seen such teeth. What an exciting find! He searched the quarry. He found a few more teeth and some bones. What giant did they belong to? No one knew. Dr. Mantell had his ideas and wrote them down. He said the teeth and bones belonged to a giant plant-eating reptile that lived during the Mesozoic era, millions of years ago. He could tell its age from the rock the teeth the bones were buried in. He drew the animal as he thought it looked. He named it the Iguanodon, which means iguana tooth. Dr. Mantell gave Iguanodon its name when he discovered the fossil teeth were like the teeth of the iguana lizard. From the few bones he had found, Dr. Mantell made his sketch of the Iguanodon skeleton. Strange bones have been found before. We know they belong to some extinct animal, perhaps a mammal. I don't ever believe giant reptiles ever existed. Impossible. Never. Ha! And millions of years old? Indeed not. Scientists laughed. A giant reptile? Millions of years old? But Dr. Mantell was convinced. He searched on, hoping to find more bones. Then he would have better proof. Meanwhile, people uncovered more giant fossils. Scientists studied the finds piece by piece. They wrote about them. They exchanged ideas and information. Bit by bit, Dr. Mantell was proved right. All these fossils were indeed the remains of a group of giant prehistoric reptiles. Dr. Richard Owen named the group Dinosauria, terrible lizards. The teeth are razor sharp, a giant meat eaters. In 1824, in England, William Backland described some bones and teeth that had been found. He said they belonged to a giant reptile, which he named the Megalosaurus. These are bones of a armored reptile, very different from Iguanodon. In 1832, Dr. Mantell described a skeleton of a giant reptile he called the Hylosaurus. In 1834, at last, Dr. Mantell found his dream, a mass of Iguanodon bones. These look like bird tracks, but what a bird! In 1835 in America, Edward Hitchcock studied footprints that had been found in 1802. He mistakenly thought they were bird tracks. Now we know of nine such giant reptiles. 1841, Dr. Owen named the dinosaurs at a meeting of scientists. After that, there was a blaze of interest. An exhibition was held of life-size dinosaur models. The excited public flocked to see them. Scientists celebrated the event. 1853, Waterhouse... Hawkins worked closely with Dr. Owen to construct Owens for the famous exhibition at Crystal Palace in London. Scientists held a banquet inside an unfinished model of an iguanodon. People knew there must be more dinosaur bones than there were. Fossil hunters uncovered hundreds of fossils. They found big ones and small ones and newly hatched babies. They dug out fossils out of cliffs and quarries, coal mines and riverbanks all over the world. Scientists pieced the bones together and gave each dinosaur a name. 1878, more than 30 iguanodon skeletons were found in a coal pit in Belgium. It took three years to dig them out. Meanwhile, two American professors spent years in a race to collect more than the other. Between them, they found 136 new dinosaurs, Othniel, Charles Marsh, and Edward Drinker Cope. Early ideas changed. Early mistakes were corrected. 1853, the iguanodon modeled by Waterhorse Hawkins had a horn on its nose. After a, a, the find in Belgium in 1878, scientists knew that the horn was really a thumb. 1914, a sketch of the Anatosaurus by Arthur Lakes had a flexible tail. Later, scientists discovered that the tail was thick and powerful. 
With every find, scientists learn more and more about dinosaurs and their world. 1854, with just a few bones to go by, Dr. Owen thought Megalosaurus walked on four legs. Later, scientists discovered it walked on two legs. 1835 to 1864, Edward Hitchcock spent 30 years collecting and describing tracks. He made careful drawings of them. He died thinking they were giant prehistoric birds. Later, scientists realized that they were dinosaur tracks. The Earth looked different then. It was not separated into many continents as it is today. It was just one mass of land surrounded by water. 200 million years ago, today. Dinosaurs could roam freely all over the world. There weren't many high mountains or oceans to stop them. The weather was warm everywhere, perfect for dinosaurs to thrive in. And did they thrive for 140 million years? How do we know? Wow, you can see the strata where the land is eroded. Don't look down. From fossils, that's how we know. Fossils are found in rock layers or strata. The rock was once mud or sand. Some dinosaurs were preserved in the mud. They became fossils. This is how it happened. Long ago, a dinosaur died. Mud covered the dinosaur layer upon layer. Slowly, both the dinosaur and the mud turned to stone. In time, more and more rock layers built up. The rock in each layer is different. Each layer contains its own fossils. That is how scientists tell time. Scientists divide time on Earth into eras and eras into periods. Dinosaurs lived during three periods of the Mesozoic era. We know that because their fossils were found only in those layers. In that long Mesozoic time, dinosaurs changed and developed. They evolved. Dinosaurs first appeared late in the Triassic period. There weren't many. They were mostly small. Then bigger dinosaurs evolved and multiplied. During Jurassic period, they grew to huge sizes. The giant plant eaters or herbivores were the biggest dinosaurs ever. There were big meat eaters or carnivores too. By the Cretaceous period, dinosaurs had taken over. There were crested ones, horned ones, and armored ones. And there was the fierce king of them all, Tyrannosaurus rex. The dinosaurs flourished. It was their world. Then suddenly they all died out. No one knows why. There are many things we don't know about dinosaurs. Well, we wonder what colors they were, what noises they made. We wonder if they were warm-blooded or cold-blooded. Scientists search for more answers. As I check at the museum and I read my new, bu new books for the latest news.